listen to this. What a crappy day. For the purposes of midweek vlogs, I have got a foot peeling mask on. I apologise about the dark. Darren looks quite perturbed by the whole thing. Yeah. And we are watching You Should Have Left with I Kevin Beckin in with his wife who's 27 years younger than he is. Um, in case you're interested, I know this light's terrible. It's this. I have got feet like horses hooves. They are really hard. And I'm going to see if I can get all the hard skin to come off. Um, but we have to call an ambulance when you don't burn. Huh? When it burns your skin off all It won't burn my skin. How do you know? It won't. Well, we'll find out, won't we? And it smells like rose. It smells really nice. So, um, it takes apparently a week for the skin to peel off. So you sh can follow the progress of my monkey feet for a week and I'll let you know if it works. YFM foot peeling mask. Pardon the sketch of me, I'm warm. I've done my roots, look, there's no grey hair. My feet! I'm going to show you my feet. Warning! Feet coming up to show you what my foot, there's Molly, show you what my foot pail's doing. Look at that. How disgusting is that? But this is what happens. So it's working. But the thing is, it's just down here that I have problems, but that's not peeling as much. I haven't looked at my other foot yet. <coughs> what is that? Is that veins or sock? Oh my goodness, look at that. You're not supposed to peel it. Yeah, right. So there you go, update on my monkey feet. That's what's happening. Day three. Day three. I'm aware this is really bad footage. It's dark. Um, it is 5 to 8 on Saturday evening and Backyard Babies are about to go live. Doing a gig from, I know it's in Malmo, Culture Bolaget Bar, wherever that is. Well, it's in Malmo. This is going to be like the only live show they do this summer with Corona and all that. So um, they're doing a live show for the fans, which is awesome. And you could like donate instead of like a ticket like to get what was it to get Nikki some petrol dragon a drink of something Pedro a drink of something. I can't remember but it was like buy them a drink basically for doing it <coughs> but instead of a drink Nikki the singer um doesn't drink or take drugs or anything anymore because he had a bad history anyway um yeah so we're gonna watch um some backyard babies which will be awesome whoop 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 that's Johan wandering off to the left there. Nicky stood with his back to the camera. Oh, 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 we're starting. Shadows, angels, clouds, seasons of love. The sound will be really good in this too. Right, I'm away to watch it. Well, you've already fiddled with the settings. Isaac is doing his daily five miles and he's decided to put it on the most difficult setting and he's now struggling. I've just done mine. And I've just made a rule that you can't turn the setting down but you turn it up. Darren did his ten miles which there's no mission of me doing. There's a squeaky pedal. Uh, oh, are you doing that on your bare feet? Yeah. Isaac. not too dark. Um, I'll try to speak up because I know that the last time I recorded in the car the sound was atrocious. Um, I changed my phone from an iPhone to an Android a few months ago when um, I spectacularly destroyed my iPhone by listening to music in the bathroom and getting steam in the headphone jack. I then, after trying everything else, tried to take it apart and couldn't get it back together again. Bit like Humpty Dumpty. So, there's a car up my arse. Why is there always a car up my arse? Um, this Android phone, iPhone, all is forgiven. I'll probably go back to iPhone when my contract's over, which is going to be like two or three flipping years. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, hello. Um, this will be going on my new Kit and Caboodle channel, um, which I know 
barely gonna have any subscribers and that's, that's okay um, just look paying attention here there's a car trying to get around a tractor you idiot see cars that drive right up tractors arse ends they can't see around it to whether they now we've got two cyclists riding side by side this is a single lane country no it's not two cycles it's two women walking a fucking dog jesus christ poor little th right you can't see i'm not going to move that what fucking idiots pardon my vulgarity that's probably stopped you watching my channel if you're not aware of my colorful language at times right this is a single right now there's a fucking slurry tank Oh my god! It's like one of those games, like you know the thing you do for the driving theory test, in the UK anyway, where they like deliberately put hazards in your way in the video and you have to click when you see a hazard. It's like I'm living that. Anyway, single lane one way, single lane another way. Anyone from the US watching this who have glorious big wide roads here in Ireland, um, now this isn't the main road, as you probably, there's a window cleaner, as you probably all know, I live in the country, so um, the road into town is like a narrow single lane one way, single lane the other way, and it's not really that wide, it's not much wider than a car, and for a massive section of it there is no, you would call it sidewalk in America, we would call it footpath here, um, because no one really walks, it's the middle of the country, no one really walks out here, and if you're walking your dog, you take it somewhere safe. Two idiots walking side by side, not even behind one another, with a dog. And the dog is like, obviously as a dog is on a lead, not even held close to the curb. Someone's going to hit them. And there's areas out here of, like, not great visibility. Oh my god, if they come round a corner and that poor little dog. It just gets me so much stupidity is probably one of my biggest peeves in life and that was stupid oh dear calm yourself lisa calm yourself there's are they wearing school uniform there's three kids just run across the road from oh there's four dogs there um just from isaac's school um into the shop and i just wondered were they in school uniform, which would be very strange given the school's been shot for three. No, they're not. They're just wearing green tops and black trousers. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Fucking cyclist. These roads really aren't suitable for cyclists. There's no cycle lanes. And, oh, dear God. Anyway, I am, um, if you're wondering where I'm going, <clears throat> I am going to Asda. There's a couple of essentials I need to pick up that I couldn't get in Tesco, so I'm driving to Asda in Antrim, which is about 20 miles-ish away. Um, I need some ibuprofen gel for my back. I've got a really bad back at the minute for about two and a half weeks. It's been shockingly bad. And then there's sciatica on top of it, which is just hellish. If you don't know, sciatica is where you get a nerve in the base of your spine that runs all the way down to your feet compresses and causes a lot of pain, numbness, pins and needles, just all over bloody irritation and pain all the way down both your legs to your feet. I've got it worse on my right hand side so um, ibuprofen does help a little bit. I don't know if it helps with the sciatica or the other back pain because I've got other back pain as well. So yeah, we shall see. Um, anything else to tell you? I never get a chance to talk to you guys because um, I'm always stuck in the house. So this is why I talk to you in the car a lot. And I apologize. I know the sound won't be very good. Um, but nothing I can do. Uh, yes, tomorrow I am going to give blood. I haven't been in a while. Which irritates me greatly because um, <clears throat> if you're a blood donor you will realize that if you even have the cold or a cough or if you have had one in the last this is nothing to do with corona this is just always if you've been ill in any way you cannot go to give blood um, i think you have to have been two weeks <clears throat> and every damn time they come around our area to do donations i'm slap bang in the middle of a cold or a flu or a virus or i've been sick 
my health leaves a lot to be desired. So right now, apart from having a hideously painful back, um, I don't have the cold, I don't have the flu, I'm not sick. So I can go, which is awesome. So Darren's a bit, I think, dubious about, you know, obviously I'm going in the middle of all this, but the need for blood donations does not stop. And I think if any industry is going to be careful about procedures and what they're doing, it's going to be nurses taking blood. So um, I'm perfectly happy that I'm going to be safe and everything's going to be fine. The, the death count in Ireland has only been, you know, I think we've gone three or four days with no deaths. Um, there was one last week. We're down to like nothing or one occasionally. Um, and I think we've had five new cases in quite a long, they have a little cluster of new cases in County Down, but that's five and they're talking about clusters. Meanwhile, other places have got like hundreds and hundreds of cases every day. So I think we're doing okay. I think we're safe enough. How that will change when tourism opens to allow everyone in and out is another thing entirely, but what can you do? Um, I know things have to get back to normal eventually. I know we have to get back out there and get on the horse, so to speak, but I think another four weeks wouldn't have hurt and I think it would have made all the difference. But we shall see. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to add, I get myself some ibuprofen gel. I need a couple of hoodies. They do, um, as does a supermarket like, um, is it Walmart in America? And as you know, they do like little bits and bobs of clothes and they're cheap, which is what we want. They do these little hoodies that are lightweight, really thin hoodies, and they usually do them in like all colors. I've worn mine so much that there's holes in it. It's just perfect for that weather that's too warm for a coat and you want to put something on. Um, and they've obviously got a little hood if it starts to rain. So um, I'm telling you that a hoodie has a hood flip sick. So, yep. I'm on the hunt for two or three of these hoodies and ibuprofen gel. And Isaac, no doubt, will be out the door when I come back to see what I have bought him. It's a disgrace. <sighs> Talking about what I've bought him. I'm sorry, folks, if you're bored listening to me talk. I know a couple of you like them, so they're for you. Um, I'll not embarrass you by saying who. Um... Christmas. We have to think about these things. I know it's a long way away, but I I have to start my Christmas shopping a long time in advance to be able to afford it. Because we don't have that much extra cash, so you have to buy like one person's present one week and the next week someone else's. And then obviously parents out there will know that, you know, children do get a tad spoiled at Christmas, but you don't want to like, you don't want to disappoint your kid. And that sounds so materialistic, but you know, you want them to have a cool Christmas. You want them to you know, open their presents and be happy on Christmas morning. And that shouldn't be what it's about. I know that shouldn't be what it's about, but Isaac's a good kid. You know, he can be a pain in the arse sometimes, as all children can be. But by the whole, you know, in, on the whole, he's a good kid. And, you know, and he deserves, deserves a nice Christmas. So this year, we are hoping to pick up a little TV for his room so that he can watch um, Netflix, like kids stuff that he likes. Um, get him a little Now box, Now TV box, so that he can watch YouTube and stuff on it. He, he is addicted. At the moment, Isaac would rather watch gamers playing games on YouTube than play the games himself, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. But that's what he's loving right now. Um, so a little TV for his room. And his mate... Just, I'm at a roundabout here, folks. I'll talk in a minute. Concentrating. And his main present, well, probably his only present apart from the TV, um, was going to be a PS5. Rather selfishly, I would be, me and Darren would probably be sharing that because we would be playing games as well. Um, we're big fans of the PlayStation. We've had, I think we've had all of them you know, from PS1 right up at one time or another. Um, I've got the PS4 at the moment, very happy with it. I'm amidst almost finished The Last of Us 2, which is glorious. See, these people complaining. It's my, I haven't watched the reviews that people have done. I've put them in my watch later list on YouTube, a few people that have reviewed it, because I don't want any spoilers, obviously, because I'm still playing it. Um, 
but apparently a lot of people have been complaining about it and calling it overtly, overly feminist. Feminist bullshit, I think was the expression. Now, I probably am more than three quarter way through this and I really don't understand that because there's been no hate speech against men at any stage. Just the fact that the main character that you play is, there's two people you play with and they're both female. Um, there's little tiny bits, oh, Jesus, just out there, Mrs. Woman with a pram in the middle of the road. Um, there's little aspects you play with a person for a short length of time, but the two main people you play with are both female. And they're both kick ass characters, they're both awesome characters. Um, and they're very capable characters, and they don't need anyone to protect them, help them, save them. They're not screaming messes, as women most often are in computer games or films. They're the ones tripping over, or causing the killer to catch up with them, etc, etc. But, these women are not that way. And I, as a woman, love that. And just because they're strong... Oh, and one of the fem female leads is a lesbian. Um, which is awesome because it's just sort of in there. It's not a big deal made of it. It's not like that usual thing that surrounds, you know, people being gay. Oh, you know, men get all lesbians about it, which is just, well, don't even get me started. But it's just sort of like something that's as if, you know, you would introduce a love couple, like a heterosexual couple, and you wouldn't think twice about it. And it's very much put across like that. And that is fantastic. That is how it should be. Um, there's nothing overtly sexual about it. Um, it's, you know, it's not done for titillation or anything like that, which is awesome. So you've got two strong female characters, very capable, really good to play, and you have a lesbian relationship. And that translates as feminist bullshit. I have no words. I'm on a faster road now, so it might get noisier. So I should probably think about signing off. So I'm back and I'm wet. It's pissing it down. And you may hear my thing in the background. Um, oh, let's turn that down a bit. I need to clear the, the windows are all steaming up. No hoodies anywhere. About 10 different styles of hoodies for men. You know, like the big thick ones, which I don't want. I want us to do these like really lightweight hoodies, which are awesome. And they have none. So it looks like I'm hoodie-less. I'm gonna have to, I've got a purple hoodie, it's gonna have to go in the bin, it's got like four holes in it. I can't wear it out of the house, it's, it's a disgrace. I got the full set of, <coughs> I don't have Corona, something in my throat. The full set of Harry Potter books for two for seven, so I think there were seven of them. So that's a lot, that's like, hang on, so, and I bought an extra book to sort of get the two for seven deal, so it was an even number. So, four, seven, 28, no, 28 quid? No, that's not right. Two for, yeah, 28 quid, is that right? So two for seven, and I got eight. So yeah, that's four, four sevens, that's 20, that's really good. The full set of Harry Potter books, and I got a Tom Gates book, which has got like loads of activities and stuff in. It's so warm in this car right now. I got myself a jumper, a like zebra print jumper, and I got myself a pair of jeans, but I'm not allowed to try them on, so I'm hoping they fit. Um, I don't have any jeans that fit. And between, I have jeans that fit when I'm like a stone lighter than I am now, and then all the other older jeans I've got don't fit because I lost a couple of stone before we went to Florida, but I've put about a stone of that back on. So I need to get back to getting some weight off. But I need jeans. All I'm wearing, I'm living in black leggings. And those are wearing out as well. So, yep, I got some school stuff for Isaac. A jumper, a pair of jeans, and the Harry Potter books. I got a Fortnite figure and a Fortnite book for Isaac. It's ridiculous. I can't go in without buying him something. And I got myself a whisper. Let's not talk about that. I want to have that now before I set off. 
um, and I'm not going to force you to watch me enjoy the whisper. Um, I'll switch off now and I will delight myself with some music on the way home. Really good with how all the stores were working, um, everything's all still marked out, social distancing. I was in Pineland, um, what was I in Pineland for? What did I just get in Pineland? I got the Pineland do some clothes. I got the zebra print jumper in Pineland for £9. I know it's meant to be Pineland, but you're not going to get clothes for a quid, are you? Um, so, uh, they've actually got a little woman at the door that's reminding everyone. With just um, She's got a little desk and she's got the antibacterial wipes and she's got the hand gel and stuff. And she's saying, just to remind everybody to keep your distance. So they've actually got a person, not just the gel there, assuming you'll use it, but a person there to make sure you use it. And then everything's marked out and stuff big screens up in front of all the cashiers and all that sort of thing. So yeah, everything's really well organised. I'm going to head home now and I do that a lot. And because I do that a lot, look at these lines. Oh my god, they're expression lines. At least I don't have these ones, which would mean I do that a lot. Darren told me, I never knew before, I, I raise my eyebrows a lot um, when I'm talking. I, just, I, I got a fringe a while back to cover these. But um, I don't sit a fringe because my face is too fat. So if I had the money, I would still be Botox in my forehead, which darn is enough. You put poison into your skin. Yes, to get rid of these wrinkles, I would. How shallow is that? But I would do it. Right, I will switch off. Thank you for listening to my waffle. I'm a bit sad that I have no hoodies. Isaac's done very well from my shopping trip. Um, and I shall hopefully catch up with you later in the week. Right, I'm stuck in a flipping traffic jam. What's going on? Oh shit, this flipping, this lane closes off in 800 yards. Shit, 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 it is shit, shit. I had inadvertently done that thing where you're in the outside lane and the outside lane closes off and everyone must feed into the inside lane. Yes, I was in that lane that was closed off that I didn't know about. These roadworks weren't there when I was on the way up. Um, I think everybody's managed to feed in now. We don't have any cheeky buggers pushing in up the side, which is unusual. Oh, there's one right at the front. You can't see him. If you can see the blue arrow in front to the right, is there, is just Nick, somebody letting men. Ah, dear me. Look at that rain. Rainy old Ireland. Oh, I'm going to be stuck in traffic now for ages. Bum! Hello folks. Yes, it's that time again. I'm back in the car. It's the next day. I've just gone to give blood. Um, I've just arrived. I'm getting out now. I, don't, I can't fill them in here because I feel like a right spoon. Um, and I shall tell you how it was when I came out. Come out. So that's me all done. Sorry, I really couldn't fill them in there because there weren't that many people. Um, obviously, I think the numbers have gone down because of Corona. Um, which is a shame because they still need blood um, but you know anything you did people were watching so I couldn't really fill them um, I suppose given blood you, you know you can't be filling people in public places can you got my wee plaster it must have if you can see it must have bled a bit look they did offer to change the plaster but I'm like nah I have a habit of bleeding loads and not stopping which is not good um, so yeah that was painless as always um, a blood test is probably more uncomfortable um you just feel the little sharp scratch when the needle goes in and then you feel nothing else the entire time so if you don't give blood here's my soapboxy thing if you don't give blood and you can give blood it's very important that you do because one day that may be you that needs that so um i've always tried to my dad always did um his whole life so sort of like if if you have someone in the family that does it becomes a normality thing um and for our family very much it was my mum couldn't give blood she's got really um serious ms so um she wouldn't be able to why why is my thing oh here we go 
couldn't work out why the AC wasn't working. Um, so yeah, I had my, oh, they usually just had the little packet of biscuits, like with like two bourbons or something in it, or digestives or something. Today, they had packets of crisps, they had, you know, little club bars, orange club bars, loads of different biscuits. I could have sat in trough there for a good half hour, but I didn't. I had my, my little club bar and I had my drink of orange and then I had a drink of something else, I think it was lime. Um, and then I left, but you have to be careful. This is the very first time. Let me give you a note of warning. It's not sore, it's not painful, it's fine, um, but the first time I gave blood, um, I wasn't, I thought, ah, it's no big deal, and I went straight from work, and I hadn't eaten very much in several hours, and I don't drink enough anyway, but since giving blood, I've learned that it's important to drink a lot when you go, on the day that you go, which I should anyway normally, but I don't drink enough, so I went that day. And gave blood for the first time. Fine, hunky dory, had my biscuit, had my drink, way I went, happy as Laurie. Um, and it was a blisteringly hot day, and I don't do well with really right major heat because if you have fibromyalgia, your body doesn't regulate heat very well. You either always feel cold or you're always too hot, or um, not everyone with fibro has this, but I definitely do have it. I find it really hard if it's really warm, I just overheat and then I feel really sick. But this day was blisteringly hot and I was walking home. Thank God Darren was with me. Um, and there was quite a steep hill to walk up to our house. So I'm walking up the hill in the really blistering hot sun after having just given however much is it a pint of blood. And I had my one and only proper faint. And it was horrible. In the street, down I went like a sack of shit. Um, I just felt something's wrong. I've never fainted before something's wrong there's something not right and I thought I was going to take a heart attack I could just feel my body struggling and I didn't know why and it, it wasn't like the typical you hear your head goes dizzy and it wasn't like that at all the feeling was off very much in my chest and Darren said my head snapped <laughs> this must have been really funny to watch my head snapped back and my eyeballs rolled up and I went <coughs> like it was a big snore noise and down I went in the street came round, it was fine. Walk the rest of the way home. But if you ever go give blood, make sure you've drunk plenty, make sure you've eaten before you go, make sure you sit down and you're not the martyr, you have the drink and you have the biscuit afterwards. I'm driving, so I've sat a good 10 minutes, I've had a club bar, I've had two drinks, and I have even brought, I found these yesterday, I don't know if this is filament backwards, fries strawberry cream. I had a bit before I went in. And I am now going to finish it. Lisa has an excuse to eat chocolate. She doesn't need one, but she's got one. Um, so I am making sure, because I'm driving home, obviously on my own, I don't want to be having a funny turn. Um, so yeah, painless. Please go do it. It makes a big difference to an awful lot of people. Um, I'm on all sorts. I'm on the bone marrow register as well. Um, I'm obviously an organ donor, so if I go every part of me that they can use, please use. Not that there's probably that much of any use. Then again, my lungs, my heart, all that stuff should be fine. I'm short-sighted as you like, so my eyes are not much use. But, um, yeah, I'm a big believer in being a donor of all descriptions, if you indeed you can. I know a lot of people can't. I know if you've... Well, something I didn't know until recently, if you've had a blood transfusion, you can't be a donor. My channel I watch, Oz Sue's, recently had a little baby. You've probably heard me talk about it before. Um, and she lost a lot of blood. Um and they wanted to give her a transfusion and this is how strong some people's morals are folks she refused the transfusion because she didn't want it to mean she could never be a blood donor again um, and she was fine and you know i'm sure if her life was in danger then she would have taken the transfusion but just to make her feel better quicker she refused um so that she could be a donor which i think is very commendable um, i wasn't even aware another thing is i haven't been for a while which i hate because you're not allowed to go if you've got a cold or if you've had a cold in the last two weeks and I, I've got colds so often it's ridiculous um, and another thing was if you've had a tattoo in the last I think it used to be six months now it's maybe four um, and obviously as you can see you know I've got quite a few tattoos and there was a period of a couple of years I was getting one every six months so I couldn't go for those couple of years which really annoyed me um, so it's like, yeah, at least I want the tattoos, but I want to go donor. So I haven't had a tattoo in a long time now, so I can go back to, to donoring. So anyway, yes, public service announcement from Lisa is over. 
go give blood, get yourself on the donor register and consider being on the bone marrow register as well folks because it's, it's well worth it. Right, off ski. One of the non-joys of living in the countryside it is midnight. Midnight. And this guy is baling his grass into hay bales, which is not an unusual thing. It's very common for them to do it at this time of night. They did in the last place we lived. And it's loud. And I am filming this from my bedroom. Tisk. Look at the state of me. I am recording a review of a mask for um, Body Shop. Japanese match at a tea mask. If you've watched that, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, and I've got lots of little body shop things as well that I'm going to be doing a separate video on, just reviewing them. Um, what can I tell? I can't believe I'm doing a vlog like this, but I've got 10 minutes to kill and I have to like just grab those moments with both hands. So while my mask is on my face, I cut my finger. You can see the blood as well. I'm trying to put this bloody ring light up and it's wrecked and I had to get scissors to certain bits of it and I cut myself. Let me show you what came yesterday. Queen, obviously my favourite band when Freddie was here, have released a range, or the post office has released a range of Queen. Oh, look at the glare. Queen stamps, and you can see it's like a lot of their albums. They have other options. They have live um, shots. They have a Bohemian Rhapsody pack. They have lots of different ones actually, but this was my favorite, the albums one. So I have to find a really odd shaped frame to put these in. But Queen Stamps guys, can you imagine sticking one of these on a letter? I mean, really? Awesome, I love them, they're beautiful. They are a thing of beauty that need to be framed and need to be put on my wall. Can I tell you anything else while I'm here? Um, I apologize most of my vlog this week has been mostly me in the car talking, but I haven't really got anything I'm so sorry you're having to sit and look at the state of my face with God only knows what on it. Um, but yeah, there's not an awful lot this week that's happened. I went to give blood, as you saw. Um, couldn't really film inside very much because there weren't that many people there. Um, haven't really been doing anything this week of any interest. Um, picked up my body shop order yesterday from Becca. Um, and a few little bits. I'll just show you them because people may not watch the body shop video. So I'll show you here as well. So I've got like a skincare bag package. I've got an aloe cream cleanser, but I shall be doing separate reviews. Oh, that really hurts. It was like a paper cut, but with scissors. Um, a tea tree mattifying toner, which I'm using at the moment, not, not this, um, because I've got a really shiny tea zone and stuff. So I'm trying that out. Um, this is what I've got on right now. It is a match, Japanese matcha tea mask, a pollutant clearing mask. Um, Cocoa Calming Face Mist. This smells divine. You can even spray this on over makeup if you want. It just hydrates your skin if it's feeling a bit dry. And this, I cannot tell you guys what this smells like. It is divine. Japanese cherry blossom. It's called Strawberry Kiss. I love anything that smells like cherries. This is just absolutely beautiful. If you like like a really heady sort of cherry. Oh, it's, it's there's something more than just cherry. It's such a lovely smell, so yeah. Anyway, I'll not leave you sitting looking at my face like this for any longer, Um, yeah. Guess what day it is. Let me turn this down. You can probably just hear the air con. It is Thursday, not Friday, but we're at the Chinese. We've just been to see my mum. Um, and it's very, very, very hot. There's Dara, I'm going to get the Chinese. My time of getting the thing working is exceptional. Darren's just got back into the car with the Chinese. Um, I've only switched this on to say it is ridiculously oh, hot. It's nice in here. It's 27 degrees, which I know doesn't sound like much, but for Ireland that's cooking. Um, yeah, so I've gone home to eat some Chinese. I might just wrap up the video and because there's so much car talk from me it's ridiculous so this may be the end of this is on the first proper video apart from my introduction on the kit and caboodle channel so 
if you've watched it, thank you. Um, I have a story to tell you all, which I think I may leave for another <clears throat> vlog, because it needs one on its own.